What's up, Snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily, and it is a beautiful day uh, in Cape Coral, Florida. And we're going to be looking, going in the snake room. I haven't gone in there yet, so I don't know what I'm going to find. I could possibly find some boa litters, some carpet python clutches, some ball python clutches, maybe some hatching of the ball python eggs. We got a Burmese python clutch that uh, is due to hatch next week, so you never know what's going to happen. So we're going to take a look. I'm first going to show you my little uh, routine in the morning here, my, I got to feed my tortoises and my fish and my turtles. So let's uh, let's get working. We got a lot to go over today and we got a lot to do. All right, for all you tortoise fans, uh, the tortoises are looking great. Here's my albino sulcata who's getting really big, really big. Look at this guy. He's put on quite a bit of size. When I got him, he was like this big, you know. And so he's put on some nice size. Uh, there's the other one over there. I don't know if they're male or female yet. I don't know. I don't think they're old enough yet to really determine that. And this one just took a drink of water. And then I have my my ivory too under there. So with the ivory, and then we got the two albinos. They're going to be eating their their lettuce here. It's a hot day here in Cape Coral. I got my uh, pitcher plant, my little carnivorous plant that kind of just kind of hangs out, grows, growing over my shelf here. I just keep giving it more water and uh, it's doing great. Of course, there's my turtles. They're doing good. That female gave me a couple of turtle eggs. I don't know if they're fertile or not. I put them in the incubator. We'll see if they ever hatched. There wasn't a lot of them. It was like maybe like six total. It was like she... It seemed like she had two clutches of three. I, I, that's all I ever found. I dug through the sand a million times. I couldn't find it. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing right or wrong. Or I don't know. We'll see. There's my very rare Timor snake neck turtle. I had gotten from Tom Crutchfield. It was a baby. You, you're going to see a bunch of those big ones, the parents, uh, when I put up the Tom Crutchfield video. Uh, so I was just at his house this past Sunday. I have uh, to edit through all those videos first. A lot of footage. There's the male red albino red ear slider, and then the female is the one I was just talking about. And then, of course, we have this gorgeous girl. This is my red belly. This is my pink belly side neck albino turtle. Oops, I had two of them, but one didn't. One died for some reason. I don't know why. Well, yep. There's my. Albino soft shell turtle is growing, he's doing well. He used to just bury himself all the time. Now he's actually coming out and playing. I really, I really like this. I, you know, I, I really think I'm going to get more of these. They do get big, but I, I really love the way these look. These soft shell turtles. This is an actual Florida soft shell too, and, but the albinos are just amazing. And then we have a uh, pink belly side neck turtle here that could possibly be an albino. This is the wild type form, and he's putting on some good size too. You can see that little pink belly, that's what they call pink belly of side neck, they pull their neck sideways, like all Asian turtles do. And they're doing good, so the turtles are doing awesome. There's my little girl, Shayla. You like the turtles? Which turtles do you like the best? She's being shy, okay. We'll take a look at the fish. We just fed the discus fish. This is my blue face San Mara. Blue face. Oh, you like the fishies. That you like. That's my albino dancing angel. My panda. Angel. It's got a little black spot. I still have, I don't know how these guppies are still alive that I put in there originally. And my female Betis, but they are. Yeah, those are the fishies. You like those fishies? Yeah, she loves the fish. My, my live plants are doing amazing. There's my clown loaches, and there's one other one of my loaches, blue loaches. There's two more of my discus. Very, what, what, which, what do you like? You love the fishes, I know, I know. She loves those fishies. Let's see what else is in here. A lot of stuff is hiding. Oh, there's my, I got a couple neons left still. I used to, I had 20 of them. We lost a bunch of them along the way, I don't know. They could have gotten eaten, I'm not really sure. 
Once I put the bigger fish in there, <clears throat> some of the smaller fish disappear. That's the way it goes, though. Uh, yeah, you show me. Which you like the catfish down there? Those quarry cats? Those are nice. I think my I think my male platinum betta is um, gone. I think someone ate him. I don't see him anymore. He wasn't here, but he disappeared. Well, let's go over to the snake room and see what's going on. All right, guys. Hopefully you're having a great day. I got my berms out here today. This is my hypo granite male. It's double head for albino and head for green. And he sired another clutch three years in a row. I'll show you his, um, his girlfriend in a little while. The reason I'm showing you them today, unfortunately, is they have to go. I have to sell them. As you know, the laws here in Florida have changed. So he's for sale with his sister, if you guys are interested in the hypo granite double head albino green pair contact me proven breeders give you guys a good deal as long as they go to a good home you guys can continue the legacy and he is probably the, my best one of my sweetest snakes uh, really good disposition beautiful i mean look at that he looks albino if you think about it aside from the red eyes the hypo and the granite together really really go nice as you can see and really tame snake. I sold my pied trio and I, the champagnes are sold. The albino champagnes, I should say, are sold. They'll be leaving here in the summer when the uh, person comes and picks them up. But this is my last breeding pair left. So if you guys are interested, you better come get them quickly because they're, they're flying. Berms are hot now because whenever, <laughs> whenever they start making things illegal uh, in certain areas, everyone wants them. Uh, they're hard to get, not as many people are breeding them. Gorgeous, love these snakes. My, one of my favorite snakes, really. Personality-wise, size-wise, I love, obviously coming from the bodybuilding background, I love a nice muscular snake, but these, I keep mine nice and lean too. They're not, these things are not fat snakes by any means at all. So if you're interested, reach out to me and I'll, well, let's go take a look at the female now. You hear the roosters in the back, but there's my hypo granite Burmese python female. She's still very depleted from her laying her eggs. She's still gaining her weight back. And she is gorgeous. She's had three clutches three years in a row for me. All beautiful ones. And I love this snake. She's awesome. But she's got to go. As you know, the laws in Florida have changed. So she'll be available with her male counterpart. I'm going to show him in a minute wanted to bring her out here so you guys can take a cool, cool look at her. Remember, there's no albino in here. This is a hypo granite that's 100% head for albino and 100% head for green. So she's, that's why she makes such amazing babies and her, the male that goes with her is the same genetics, hypo granite, double head, albino and green. She's got a really nice head. Um, she's got like more of a clear head pattern. You can see she's got a really nice golden body. Once again, we got to start really feeding her now and get her back, get her weight back. She had a 19 egg clutch this year that should be hatching in the next couple weeks. And she's, I'm gonna miss her, I really am. If you guys are interested, let me know. And we'll finish off today. Here's one of my Russo Red Pastel Hypo, possible super hypo, Sterlings. That's the patternless boa. I produced this girl here in 17. Her sister went last year. Uh, I bred her this year. Uh, instead of going Sterling to Sterling and making more Sterlings, you know, because I figured, you know what? I already did that last year and we got a whole bunch of Sterlings. I still haven't even listed all of them. We sold a lot though, because people have been reaching out to me. I bred her to a leopard head albino. Now, it might sound like an inch, a weird choice, but not really, if you think about it. Now, <clears throat> the het leopards will look pretty interesting. So we'll have something, and, the, and the, we should get some hypo het leopards. They'll all be, obviously, het for sterlings. They're really double het leopard sterlings that will be hypo, and probably, hopefully, a lot of them will be Russo red pastel. The idea of producing a 
leopard sterling. Who knows what the hell that would look like? I mean, leopard is very red. And if we keep the hypo gene in there, hypo leopards are super red. Obviously, the non-hypo leopards are very dark. So I don't know. I don't know what it's going to produce. This, this girl is like really fantastic. And she's going to drop a litter probably, hopefully, if good babies anytime soon. And then if anyone wants to get in this project, uh, should be some pretty cool looking babies. And hopefully the next generation, when we breed those back to each other, we should make some really, really cool looking sterlings. I have a lot of sterling projects going. As you saw earlier this week, I produced the albino and sun glow sterlings. So there's gonna be a lot of cool sterling stuff in the collection. I, I, I see sterling has got tremendous potential, so. Looking forward to this is a gorgeous female. She's glowing. I think she's gonna deliver any day. All right, this is my hypo or super hypo crystal, or what I believe to be a super hypo super labby. The super form of the labyrinth boa is the crystal. It's a blue-eyed leucistic. Um, this is this female. Um, actually, was bred this year, and I didn't want to say anything until I saw what happened. <laughs> And what's weird about the whole thing is that I came in here and there was goo all over the cage. There was no slugs. There was one dried up dead baby. And I bred her to a super onyx blood, which I thought would have been, everything you know, would have been labby, everything would have been onyx, and then everything would have been head blood. The one baby, I will show you the picture of it, is probably the only I guess you could say visual <laughs> evidence of a labby onyx combination. Unfortunately, the baby didn't live. I was convinced that she was going to deliver more babies. Um, the only thing that was was maybe not convincing me is that she had. There was, I mean, this this cage was covered in goo. I've never seen a boa though give birth to one baby, and there were no infertiles anywhere. So it was just one, you know, fully formed. You'll see. You see the picture. Baby. I mean, it could have been alive. It's just the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Now, she's a little on the small side, so maybe she wasn't big. I don't know. I have no idea what happened. Um, she's a gorgeous snake, and um, at least I know that, that, you know, the super labby females can produce. That's a good, that's, you know, they're, they're definitely fertile. Maybe because she was too young. Maybe the, you know, maybe they just didn't breed enough. I don't know. I would just figure I would see more infertiles. You know, but there was none. There was literally just that one baby in, in a mess of goo. And it's been two weeks now, so I haven't seen any more babies being delivered. I think she's done. She had a meal the other day. She shed. I think that's it. <laughs> it's just the weirdest thing I've ever experienced. But I wanted to show you guys what, what the labionics combination looked like. It was kind of cool. You know, now I don't know if it would have looked even cooler. Maybe the baby was premature. I, I don't know what the, what the problem was, but... Just to give you guys, you know, like I said, I think it's it warrants showing the baby off just because no one's ever produced one. So hopefully next year, you know, maybe, I don't know if I'm gonna have to give her a year off. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna feed her up and see what she looks like next year as far as, she didn't really lose much body composition because I mean, what, what was the, uh, what was the strain on her one baby? I mean, that's it. So we'll see, maybe she'll go again next year. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed uh, today's video. It was pretty cool that um, almost we almost had a really, really cool litter of Labby Onyx head bloods. And it just didn't happen. You know, I'm glad at least I had that one baby to prove that it is possible and what it would look like, although it probably was a little undeveloped. It was cool to see that. If anyone is interested in those um, Hypo Pie double head albino green Burmese python pair proven breeders, very healthy uh, Burmese python, slow grown. Let me know, hit me up, and we can make a deal. They're the last pair I have left of breeders to sell, so um, if you're looking to get into the uh, Burmese python breeding program, that's a good one. And it really makes some cool stuff with that. All right, you guys know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, hit the like button. We'll see you back Monday morning, and look out for those Tom Crutchfield videos I did.